Recently, I visited uh, Idaho, Salmon, Idaho, to be exact, to visit some friends of ours that are river guides. And while there, I was asking them about where I could find fish to look at as it was pretty early in the spring. There was still a lot of snow everywhere. And they suggested that I check out a lake that wasn't too far away called Williams Lake. Now, they're sport fishermen, so they were talking about the trout and the larger game fish. So I hopped online and looked up the lake. Williams Lake is pretty huge but what I found when I did just a quick google search and checked out some of the fishing game sites is that not only are there a lot of game fish there but there's also a species of shiner and if you guys are new here I work with a lot of shiners in my hill stream tank so this made me very excited I figured if I could go to this lake and find him maybe I could learn something that would translate to keeping my fish at home better um, the pictures on the website weren't very impressive, but I jumped onto Google Maps to check out the topography because this was a very mountainous area. I've had my knee replaced. I need to actually physically be able to get to these places. So I looked at the um, topo map and it looked like there were roads that went very, very close to the lake, which makes sense because it's a tourist def destination for fishing and camping and boating and all those things. So I jumped onto fish base and looked up information on this fish to see if, you know, there was any like fish keeping information on it or even just some information about where I might find them because that place was huge. And it said that they're generally found in creeks, small rivers. Um, the website had said that they are found all year long. So I felt pretty good about the potential for finding these fish. Um, so I just looked again for a Google image search to see what they actually looked like. Now, I didn't expect to find them in that beautiful spawning dress because, again, it was very early in the year. But it did say that they were found all year. So I was hoping I would find them like these guys, these little sort of silver and gray ones. We hopped in the truck and it was uh, it was it was a beautiful drive, but it was definitely single lane gravel drive, no shoulders, no barricades. And I definitely wouldn't want to do this in, uh, in bad weather because it was a bit precarious, but absolutely stunning. Uh, and as we came up on the lake, I just could not believe the sheer size of this lake. This is just one small portion of this incredibly vast waterway that also had all the small feeder creeks and streams. Um, and it just <sighs> with the views of the mountains, the snow, it was incredibly incredibly beautiful so whether I found fish or not I knew I was gonna have a good day but of course I was really hoping that we would be able to find some fish I was really starting to have my doubts though uh, because it looked so deep and so big and I don't have a float boat I don't have any way to get out into the actual water I only have myself my nerd kit and my little net so we stopped down at the boat dock Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary. In today's episode of Crazy Hair and Questionable Hygiene, we are at Williams Lake to look for red shiners. Um, you'll have to let me know down in the comments how I'm succeeding in the overall look. But for now, we're going to take a look around some of the feeder creeks, as well as this huge lake up here in the mountains, and see what we can find. And based on what I had read from Fish Base, I really thought the place that I was going to find these fish was in these feeder streams and creeks. Um, this is, I guess, for the area, a well-populated trail. Um, but I was still a little bit nervous about encountering moose or bear as it was clearly moose and bear country. In fact, at one point we found some, uh, either an elk or a deer carcass. And I just started poking around some of the little feeder streams. And I wasn't seeing anything. Um, I, I was kind of shocked, you know, the, it was a beautiful day. The sun was out. It was like mid-morning. This is really when I thought I was going to be finding these fish and where I thought I was going to be finding these fish. But again, this was a bunch of different waterways. So I figured I'd just keep poking around and looking and seeing what I could find. Um, I really was seeing literally nothing, uh, just some algae and you know, that can be a bit frustrating. I was also wearing completely inappropriate footwear. I was wearing kayaking boots with the thought that I would be tromping around in these creeks, which was fine, except for they're not real great for hiking. Um, and 
because of where the the lake is located, there was a fair amount of hiking to get from point A to point B. Um, I did see some really large spawning trout in some of these smaller streams, and the lighting and just the entire nature experience was incredibly beautiful. We hiked further up the trail. Um, you can see there's still definitively snow on the ground at this point to try and get up to have a good view of the entire lake so that we could decide sort of where to go next. Uh, at this point, we had explored several of these smaller creeks or streams or whatever you want to call them that feed into this giant lake. And all I'd seen was a handful of trout. The view from the top, wow. I mean, wow. I decided to go down and check out the feeder creek that was closest to the lake in the hopes that maybe this is where they were. Again, on the website, which I guess, you know, fish don't read the internet, fish don't follow the rules. On the internet, it said it would be in these creeks and streams. Um, but again, I had seen literally nothing. Um, it was very, very frustrating. But, you know, it only been a couple hours at this point, and the day was still young. So we kept going along and looking and then decided to hike back to the truck and drive back up to the boat dock and check out the main lake. And I had really low hopes of seeing anything at the lake. I mean, right along the shallows, it was relatively uh, transparent and, again, maybe, maybe hip deep. But there was still a very big body of water. So I spent a while just walking around the edge and standing and looking and just trying to be patient. But I was not even seeing trout in, in this large body of water. I was literally seeing nothing. I mean, there were a bunch of ducks. There were some loons. I was hearing a lot of really cool bird calls. I mean, the scenery was breathtaking, but I was not seeing any fish. And for this to be like a destination fishing spot... I really didn't understand how I was not seeing any fish. I kept trying to go where the birds were, thinking that maybe that's where the minnows were. Um, I was walking through the edges of the water, climbing over boulders, climbing up and down hills, and just really, really getting frustrated at this point. You know, it had been several hours at this point, and I had only seen fish that I was completely uninterested in. None of the ones that I thought I was going to see so abundantly. So, you know, I went and I decided to just sit on the banks and soak in the beauty of the day, the beauty of the scenery, uh, take some water measurements, and stick my camera in the water just to see what it looked like underneath. And as you can see, there was a lot of offwooks, which is what was predicted that would attract these guys. There were a bunch of little scuds and copepods and little micro crustaceans that theoretically the shiners would feed on in order to get into condition to breed. Um, there was a little bit of aquatic vegetation, but m not much. Uh, these rocky jumbles would be particularly good for the spawning of the shiners. So I was hopeful. But again, at this point, pretty sure I wasn't going to see anything. Um, I decided to take some TDS readings, which were very, very, very dilute. I think I got readings ranging from about 60 parts per million to about 80 parts per million, which wasn't particularly shocking, especially with all the snow melt. I mean, you would expect for this vast level of water to be very dilute. So the test results are... Alkalinity of 64, general hardness of 36, pH of 7.2, 0 0.4 phosphorus, which isn't surprising with all the algal growth and uh, off walks on the rocks, 0 0.1 ammonia, no nitrite, no nitrate. So even though the TDS is super low, the pH is relatively neutral, and again, that's probably all the, the snow melt diluting things, but it's kind of interesting. So you need soft, cool water for these shiners. Now, at this point, I was basically ready to give up. We, it's early afternoon, and it was just about then that a flashing caught my eye. And then all of a sudden, seemingly out of nowhere, there were literally fish everywhere. I don't know if it was the time of day. I don't know if it was the position of the sun. I don't know what caused it, if they just got over the fact that we were there. But all of a sudden, there were just shiners literally covering every surface of every rock 
flashing, grazing on the off walks, swimming around. And it was just, it was so rewarding after sitting there most of the day trying to find them. And really, I was extremely ready to give up. I was done at that point. You know, my feet were wet. I was tired. I had been hiking. I was sweaty. The sun was up and I hadn't seen a single fish. So to have it work out this way that, you know, just by waiting a little bit longer and getting over myself and deciding to learn what I could from the situation, you know, take the water parameters with my aqua spin, get a TDS reading, get an idea of what the, the decor in the water looked like, what these fish were eating. It really paid off in that we saw a ton of a ton, a ton of these awesome little fish. Now, I tried to net some, but as soon as the net hit the water, man, these guys scattered, and they are fast. Um, but again, it didn't look like they were in breeding dress. They largely look silver with a gray stripe. You can see that they travel in massive schools. Um, again, the water was very, very, very dilute, very soft, very cool. And they were grazing on that off walks or the algae and microcrustaceans that cling to the rocks. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing sort of the process and the journey of me looking for this fish. I know I really have a great time doing these things. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. And I have a lot more of these trips planned. So I hope that you guys will continue to watch. Let me know what you think down in the comments.